Hey guys, George with Diamond Yard Sports Cards coming at you with a national recap. Now, I've been getting a lot of heat from some of my friends about not doing a national recap in a timely manner. So I was I was getting criticism from uh, one John Mangini about the fact that I'm going to get kicked out of the Misfits group or the YouTube Hall of Fame if I don't get going on this video. So after uh, a lot of uh, thinking and I've just been digesting the whole experience and what a great awesome experience it was i finally put together something and i'm not i don't have the skills of a vintage composer or an elite hunter is putting together stuff and in a video format as well as those guys do i do want to say uh, let's get lou rock tv over the hump of a thousand subscribers lou you have a great channel and it was awesome hanging out with you at the national uh speaking of that <clears throat> the national well Anybody who, who, who says that the National uh, tells you that you got to go to the National, you're missing out if you don't go to the National. They're absolutely right. Absolutely right. My first National, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to the guys at my Airbnb. They're the number one reason. Uh, they're the starting point here because we planned this a long time ago. Don, Don's Field of Dreams cards. John Mangini. Rick Vintage Oddball cards. Lou Rock TV. Uh, James Elite Hunters, and of course, Bob Lewis. So guys, shout out to you. Um, stayed with those guys in an Airbnb in Atlantic City and had a great time. Uh, many guys came over uh, and hung out. Uh, Scott Reindeer Studios, Eric Four Leaf Cards, they were over at our place quite a bit hanging out as well, and among other guys. But uh, my, my thoughts about the National, I'm going to kind of just go through with you kind of what what I did, uh, what some of the guys did, who I ended up hanging out with, uh, and the YouTube community was, and all the collectors, not just the YouTube community, just the whole collecting community, it was a wonderful time. And that was the number one thing for me at the National. Uh, people say this, but is it the cards? Is it the autographs? Is it the spectacle? Uh, is it location? It's certainly not the location. But anyway, it's the people. It's the people, and it was outstanding to be there uh, and just be talking to like-minded people. I mean, whether it's vintage or it's modern, autographs, um, raw cards, graded cards. You know, the dealers overall were great. Um, you know, had no complaints. The facility was great. Uh, the convention center was like two Costco's full of sports cards. I don't know how many tables there were there, but... Got done watching uh, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's uh, Cardboard Chaos video. He was saying how you couldn't see to the end, which is true. Um, so, I mean, there were, you know, of course, positives and negatives, but uh, overall, very positive experience. At the end of this video, I'm going to be uh, showing a five-minute montage of just the cards I was looking at. Uh, you can kind of see what I took video of. A lot of it's vintage. Um, a lot of it's like Jackie Robinson, Babe Ruth, just kind of the cool cards that I saw when I was there. Uh, is it a place that you can find anything you want? No, um, depending on, you know, where you're at and you're collecting. But it's a place where you can certainly find things that you hadn't even thought you were looking for. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's just amazing when you're walking through the general vintage section and every case has a Hank Aaron rookie. Every case seems to have a Sandy Koufax rookie. I mean, that's kind of like the starting point. And it was a lot of high end. I will tell you that I will... I would address it and I will address it differently in the future. I'll be more focused. Baseball collector Mike, great meeting you, man. Uh, after all this time, a true pleasure. Uh, we talked a lot of, before the national and even at the national, and he was right. You know, it's a lot to wrap your arms or your, wrap your mind around. Uh, you can't, it's hard to see the whole floor and then come back and try to, you know, now figure out what you want to buy. Because if you do, it's probably going to be gone or you're never just going to see the whole floor. For example, I went around uh, trying to see the whole floor, and I don't even think I saw the whole thing. I was there Wednesday night through Sunday. We went for like three hours Sunday, and I still didn't see everything. So, I mean, it's it's a massive show, and there's no doubt about it. So you have to be focused on what you're looking for. Uh, it also seems to be a place, even though John, great seeing you, Wade Boggs fan, awesome hanging out, but he had completed some sets. Uh, he was showing me, and he was really excited about it. I seem to notice a lot of guys just brought kind of their best stuff. I was looking for a certain 49 Bowman card, which will be in another video to follow shortly. Uh, and I couldn't find it because nobody brought this. It's kind of a, it's a common really. And nobody brought the card because uh, they're bringing, you know, they're bringing Satchel Pages and Jackie Robinsons and Yogi Berra's and Stan Musial's. 
Uh, but anyway, I just want to kind of go through, uh, hit the montage in a little while here. I'm going to show some cards I picked up. And the reality is here, I only picked up two cards. One card at the show, one card off a fellow YouTuber. Um, brought a lot of stuff to trade. And I didn't really find something I was willing to put on the line all the stuff that I brought to trade and the cash to per to pick up. Now, there were some beautiful things there, absolutely beautiful things, but um, it was tough with the internet. You know, you guys have heard this. It was hard to get service to try to see, you know, if they were gonna trade me, what value and, and what I was gonna offer them. Frankly, the only deal I did was a, like a blind transaction. I just thought that's a beautiful card. And on Wednesday night, I went uh, and I saw this card. Uh, it's the only card I picked up at the show. And uh, saw it, talked to the dealer who was really friendly. Uh, he actually asked me what he should do with some 52 Tops Commons that he had. Uh, I said, well, you know, I'd submit the best ones to PSA under their special. I'd send the rest to Greg Morris. Um, and he's like, oh, I had never thought of that. And uh, just a super nice guy. And when I circled back around the next day, I couldn't get the card out of my mind. Uh, I ended up working a deal with him, but without any internet, without any comps, just kind of thinking, well, that card seems to be worth that much. But uh, overall, great experience. So what happened to me was I ended up going in early from Phoenix. I flew to Philly to hang, hang out with my cousin and uh, his wonderful family and my aunt, my uncle on that Tuesday night. Uh, Rick Vintage Oddball Cards and Lou Rock were coming in. Uh, the next day, I was supposed to meet him at the Philly airport, and we were going to wait for Don, uh, who had a car fact packed full of guys coming from Pittsburgh, uh, and they were going we to squeeze with seven of us in his vehicle. Well, um, the next morning, I called up Rick, and uh, he had arrived, taking a red eye, and uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Lou's flight was a slightly delayed flight, and he ended up calling up Sean Tiefer. And Sean, I had never met him before, but Lou hooked us up. As soon as Lou got in about 1, 1, 1 1.30 p.m., Sean Tiford was at the Philly airport to pick us up. We hopped in his vehicle. Uh, he lives, I guess, in the area. And we ended up rolling down to AC. And boy, Sean was just a great guy. We, we hung out a lot. I, I did not know him before. I, did, I just met Lou. I just met Rick. Uh, but we rolled down to AC, the Airbnb. Um, and then uh, James Elite Hunters arrived. And... Uh, I, Sean brought a slew of cards to trade and to sell. Uh, vintage stuff, all kinds of cool things. There, I think, was there a contract for 33 Gaudi contract. I'm not sure if it was for Chuck Klein or not. Uh, he, I think he had a 39 play ball sample back, Chuck Klein. And I picked up my first card of the National from Sean, who hooked us up. Um, he even asked me, I guess it was Bob or Lou was looking at some cards. What should I charge him for this? And I said, well, you should charge him this. And he said, I'll sell you the Reggie Jackson for that much too. So I bought a 78 Reggie Jackson off him and I'll show in a little while. Um, and then what happened was uh, Don and, and the guys arrived. Uh, but unfortunately, we got word that John had car trouble, as you've probably heard. And John had car trouble only like 40 miles, less than 40 miles outside of AC. So uh, we sent a reconnaissance crew. Don didn't have enough driving. After eight hours, he's like, well, I'll go pick him up. And James went with him. And so they went out to, uh, to go, uh, go get John, save him. And so then we uh, ended up going to the show for a couple hours. Rick and uh, uh, Rick, James, I believe, Lou and Bob and I. And James was going to pick up John. Anyway, so got to the show on Wednesday. Started looking around. And uh, again, you know, Sean Tiford was with us. It was a great time. Um, I would say that we went to the show for a few hours. Uh, it really just shocked me, the, the vastness of it. Uh, but again, milled around a little bit, saw that one card. I, I was like, wow, that card just strikes me. Uh, but anyway, so then went back to the, went back to the Airbnb and, uh, hung out, uh, opened up a box. All of us opened a box of 85 Donruss wax. John was there. Uh, all the guys were there and uh, just hung around, drank whiskey along our long dining room table, open packs, uh, and had a ball. And Rick would go on to pick up a bunch of uh, bunch of junk, junk wax boxes. And each night that we came back to the place, we would just sit and crack junk wax. And so props to you, Rick. And by the way, Rick gave me this. He uh, gave us all awesome shirts. Here's my 50 Bowman Jackie shirt. It's game used from the National, uh, which was really cool. So thank you so much, Rick. Um, so then on, on Thursday was a big day because it was the first full day of the show for us. And so we got there, um, met Filmington, uh, John and a group of us got there. Uh, then I ran into B. Roth and I ran into uh, John Paparazzi talking ball cards. Great channel. So B. Roth and, 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 and John and I, uh, Paparazzi, end up just walking the show together. 
uh, and it was really cool to walk the show with them. They have similar interests that I, as I do. Uh, B. Roth was introducing me to different dealers that he knew, and he was really looking for some Hank Greenberg stuff, of course. And it was really cool to watch him just kind of go through the different Greenberg stuff, the way he went about it. So it was, it was excellent. Um, so following those guys around, and then... Uh, Ran into baseball collector Mike. We had talked, and Mike, you showed me all your cool stuff, uh, all those pickups, including that beautiful satch, 49 Bowman satch, which was awesome. So congratulations on those pickups. It was awesome to finally meet you. JT was there as well. Talked with JT a little bit, and that was fun. Andy, she brought in the refractors, was there. I don't want to leave anybody out. I'm trying not to leave anybody out. Uh, Dave's Midnight Car Crisis, hung out with him quite a bit. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. Uh, after that, after that day, I ended up uh, talking. I think it was with B. Roth and uh, Dead Guy Cardboard. That was really cool. So met Picker Jim S. Uh, that was awesome as well. Um, I'm just thinking here who else. I uh, Dean Gerhardt came up, started talking to Dean. Talked to him another time later. Uh, wished I talked to him more. Along with everybody else, it was so hard to mix the social aspect when you don't when you first meet people. And, uh, and then the cars, because you're just trying to, I'm a talker, like Eric Fourleaf, he's a talker. We talked a lot at the house, uh, had a great time, but just meeting all these guys was very neat. I don't want to leave anybody out, uh, and I do really appreciate meeting all you guys. So then on Thursday at the show, we milled back around, uh, B. Roth and uh, Paparazzi and I milled back around to the guy who I saw had this beautiful card, and I ended up talking to him. And uh, worked a deal uh, for a Mickey Mantle, a Red Heart Mickey Mantle, which uh, I'll show you shortly. Then uh, we ended up going to the, uh, oh, I also won on Thursday. I had brought two uh, photo packs from the 49 Dodgers photo pack. And I'll reveal those on a, on a video shortly to follow. I got those back from SGC. I dropped them off at the National. I've already got them back. Uh, and they got graded, and they're, it's really exciting. Um, and these are photo packs that PSA does not grade. Beckett and SGC grade them. But anyway, dropped those off. SGC was awesome. There was not a huge line. I had pre-printed out all my stuff, and they were very friendly, very customer service oriented. Um, and again, I continue to be impressed by them. So uh, then went to the YouTuber's reception, and boy, that was a lot of fun. And by the way, there was a guy I met. Um, his name was Chris, and he, I believe, is a retired principal. And when I walked in the show Thursday, he came right up to me and he's like talking to me and he knows me from YouTube. And it was just so kind of humbling, frankly. He's just like, I love your channel and we really enjoyed talking to each other. And he was showing me some pickups and it was a pleasure to meet him. Uh, we were walking along, Rick and I, and then uh, it was Prestige Collectibles who specializes in Japanese cards. And Don picked up a beautiful Sadaharo O from him. Um, he looks at, I just hear, as I'm walking past his booth, I hear him say, Diamond Yard, Oddball. And I'm like looking, and Rick's looking, Diamond Yard, Oddball. So anyway, and uh, we met him, and he was fantastic. Um, bought some Japanese packs from him. I know he worked with the guys on some, some stuff too. So Prestige Collectibles, and I know he's always the national. YouTuber's Reception, um, walked in there and uh, met up with some guys, and, and so all of a sudden, boom, there's John Wade Boggs fan. There's um, Iconic Al introduced himself to me. Uh, Eddie's Cardboard Chaos came up. We started talking, and he, he'd won a contest of mine. And he said that it was his favorite modern card. Even he doesn't really collect modern all that often. He got this really cool pink refractor on Wakunian in a contest I did, and he was really happy about it and stuff. And so we wrapped. Um, Adam, the Vintage Sanctuary, was there. Talked with him. Uh, Ray from Philly. I walked up to Ray from Philly, and boom, there's Victor. Uh, the rookie card specialist, so talked and hung out with those guys. I know Ray had a friend who was there who I talked to, a real nice guy as well. Um, Bill, the Hall of Fame collector, got a chance to pick his brain about autographs. He had to go, I think, that night, uh, but it was great to talk to him, uh, especially about his David Bowie autograph that I guess his mom had, had gotten when she wrote a letter to David Bowie, which always struck me. I love that video that he did. Um, uh, walked around the bar. There was uh, just a Joe Silver Jackify. He had just picked up a Jackie Robinson rookie. We talked at length about that, uh, reholdering it or whatever. Right behind that, me then was Vince, New York Yanks fan seven. So we're all just talking about Joe DiMaggio and other cards and, and the way we collect. And that was awesome. Uh, Paparazzi was there. He brought his lovely wife as well uh, and just hung out there with everybody. Um, Mike, obviously, baseball collector was there. I missed talking to Eric those back pages. Uh, unfortunately, I would catch up with him a little bit later. Um but there were just, I don't want to forget anybody, but there were so many, it was just such, so much fun uh, hanging out. Dave's Midlife Card Crisis was there, of course. 
Um, and then, uh, and then Andrew, enough said cards, I think stole the show with, uh, he brought his, his case of cards. You're going to see some of them in the video, like a shoeless Joe Jackson. There's a pair of rookies in my video. One was Andrew's, uh, that he had just picked up at the show and the other one was Joe's and he had just picked it up. So, uh, that was really cool. Talk to Andrew for a while then catch up with him later on the next day on the floor with a friend of his. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, also met Josh, rated rookie, and he made a huge pickup. Uh, and you guys have seen his video, I'm sure, about the Bill Russell. He made a bunch of huge pickups, but that Bill Russell rookie, what timing and what a great card and what a great guy. So it was just, I'm trying to remember everybody as I'm going through this, but again, privileged to hang out and talk cards with all these guys in the community that are so knowledgeable um, and very nice and just you know self-effacing and just really good people. Um, and there were really, and at least my perception was, there weren't a whole lot of egos going on at all. Uh, and that's just really pleasant. Uh, so then after we looked at Andrew's cards, it blew us away. So we ended up going back to our place again on Friday night or Thursday night, hanging out. Uh, Friday at the show, uh, hanging out with the guys at the house, Eric Fourleaf, uh, Scott Rainier Studios, uh, hanging out there. So uh, the next day, Friday, I went back to the show, uh, ended up milling around, uh, those back pages ended up talking to Eric. Uh, just the conversation just flowed. It was so easy to talk to Eric about cards. We had a really good time. I wish we had more time to talk. I think I saw Dean Gerhardt again there, and that was a pleasure. Uh, it was just amazing, you know. Um, and, and so, uh, what else? Uh, the the biggest thing I received at the show was a uh, an item, an art item that uh, Scott Reindeer Studios had had drawn for me or painted for me. And uh, I'll talk more about that when I show the item. And you've seen this video and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put a link down below. Uh, but Friday night uh, was the reveal of this amazing piece that he had made. And Don had said to me, he'd seen the piece before the National. And he said, George, this is gonna be the best thing that you receive or you get at the National. And he was absolutely 100% right. Uh, awesome piece and, and Scott just did such fantastic work and you guys all in the community know what a great art, artist he is but he's just even more of an awesome guy um, Eric Forleaf was there doing uh, doing drawings as well in the VIP area I talked to him and he had just drawn awesome Hank Aaron uh, among other things the Yastrzemski so really good to hang out with those guys uh, that was the that was Friday and then you know you kind of feel like you're you're headed towards the end of the show. You're kind of on the downhill slope here. Uh, so you really want to suck the marrow out of the last day, which I think we did. Um, you know, ran to Wade Boggs fan right when we got there Saturday. Bob Lewis and I took a couple pictures with him. Um, I was going in. I was I ran across a Tom Seaver that I was really interested in. You'll see that in the video. Uh, but then I ended up selling some cards uh, instead of buying some cards. Uh, Iconic Al. Uh, showed me he was leaving. He had just gotten his main item and he was leaving and really want to show me. And it was a beautiful Jackie Robinson uh, signature. So uh, take a look at that. It'll, it'll be in the video as well. And it was awesome to see that he got really what he was looking for uh, at the show. So um, saw Chris Gill, who I had met from Tennessee, who I had met earlier at the YouTube, uh, YouTube reception. And he was showing me some really cool cards, Jackie and a Koufax. He had picked up uh, and then B. Roth came up to me and uh, showed me his killer 1934 uh, Hank Greenberg that was dead centered. And uh, he came up to me and he said, this is a George card. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, it is. I'll buy it off you. But it's so nice. And he uh, he knows where to go if he wants to sell that one. Uh, but anyway, that was an awesome uh, experience getting watching uh, him get that. He got that reholdered. Uh, saw a baseball collector for the last time. Said goodbye to him, Andy, and uh, JT and some of the guys. Uh, Jake, the secret leprechaun, hung out with us on the final night, Saturday night. We had a, uh, went back to the place and had a James. James had picked up a great old mill Christy Matthewson. You've seen it probably in this video. I, does, I got some video of it too. Beautiful card. Um, and so we went back to the, uh, the Airbnb. Uh, guys came over, paparazzi, B. Roth. You'll see a picture of everybody. Scott, uh, Reindeer Studios, Four Leaf, all the guys at the house. Um, just all hung out and had a great time uh, at the house the last night. And so I guess, you know, other than eating too much pizza and too many sandwiches and not getting a steak dinner or something like that, uh, the show was awesome. And I would say, you know, if you're going to go have a plan. So uh, know what you're looking for. Um, and it's great to go with a crew because you will have a great time 
Uh, and again, if I forgot anybody, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. But hey, let's look at some cards. Here we go. So my long-windedness continues, but I'm going to try to go through this and do it some justice. Um, so what happened here was at the YouTuber's reception, uh, vintage composer Mike came up to me. You haven't looked at his, you, I'm sure everybody's subscribed to his channel who's subscribed to mine, or you should be. Gave me some cards. Uh, it was great to hang out and talk with him. Woo! Ric Flair. He knows my love for Ric Flair. And Jackie, of course. That was awesome. And then he told me that the video that touched him or what he enjoyed the most was a video I did about the 2009 Super Bowl when my Arizona Cardinals went to the Super Bowl and he gave me the schedule from that 2008 season. I could probably tell you the scores of all these games. Um, but anyway, so thank you so much, uh, Mike. Appreciate it. And he gave me this Cardinal sticker, which was awesome. Football season is coming. John Wade Boggs fan gave me this beautiful uh, 12 of 60 special limited edition. Uh, 1971 Wade Boggs fan uh, card. Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. Even though he's a Seahawk fan, it's okay. Eddie, great to see you. Great talking with you, man. Um, Big Scott, met him as well. I'm just trying to remember everybody. Iconic Al from Iconic Baseball. He came up. We started talking. Uh, I owe him a drink. Uh, but it was a true pleasure meeting you. And congratulations on your Jackie Robinson autograph. And you check out his channel and his video. Uh, Victor, the rookie card specialist, was talking with Ray from Philly. Went up and talked to those guys. It was just, you know, not enough time to talk to these guys. Victor, pleasure meeting you. Jake, the ticket leprechaun, rode with us back from uh, New Jersey to Philly. And then I guess rode back to Pittsburgh with Don and the guys. Look at that autograph right there. And it's the 56 size. And you guys have seen this. And he's got these stats on the back. Jake and I were talking about softball. Love how he's got how he won four championships. And he's got some obscene softball stats. So, Jake, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing softball with you someday, my friend. Uh, if I'm not too old. So these were some of the guys I met. Again, if I forgot anybody, I'm so sorry. Uh, when John got in, uh, he'd run running late and, and everything was, you know, it was all haywire. But he still managed to pull this out for me. He'd asked me what I was searching for. And I said, I was searching for a 38 Gaudi, a 38 DiMaggio. And John said, well, here's your 38 DiMaggio. And he gave me this um, Our National Game uh, pin, which is awesome. So thank you so much, John. I think this is really cool, and I picked up another one uh, just recently. I'll show in a new video soon. So I picked up, um, uh, first pickup was from Sean Tiford, and again, Sean, thank you so much uh, for the card, but more importantly, it was just great hanging out with you, my friend. Uh, this beautiful 78 Reggie, and it was it was a Yankee festival, kind of. You know, I got DiMaggio here, I mean, Jilt and Joe, and then I picked up this 78 Reggie, now, it's an 8, but boy, it's a nice 8, and the colors in this thing pop, centering's great, and in my opinion, this is like the best 70s Reggie card. Best Yankees Reggie card, for sure. Uh, but anyway, love this. Thank you again, Sean. And he took, like, it was like a song. I mean, he cut me a deal. So the card I was really into um, that I saw and was this Red Heart Mickey Mantle, and I just was looking at it, and then the next day I went back and looked at it, and the wheels were greased because... Paparazzi had already bought a campy rookie off the same guy just minutes earlier. And this card is just beautiful. And I could hear Blue Jacket 66's video. And I he just how he loves the red or the red heart mantle. And I was like, you know what? This has just got to be uh this has got to be brought into the fold. I couldn't believe the centering on this card. I mean, I know it's a four and a half, but boy, I mean it just presents so well. Uh the colors were awesome, it just pops. So, this, you know, I think there's a little baby wrinkle here. There's a little dinger there and maybe another slight baby wrinkle there. But this card was just, to me, shockingly, you know, just really looked nice. Pre-war sticker or not, I don't care. I don't need pre-war Mike Baker to tell me that it's a nice looking card. Um, you know, that's the eye appeal is what I'm looking for. Always looking for eye appeal. Uh, so I don't need somebody to tell me about that. Uh, Anyway, I was just really happy to add this, this, this Mick. Um, so we also, uh, we also, uh, the last thing I got at the national and the best thing, uh, frankly, uh, is this from Scott. I had, uh, commissioned him to do this piece of art for me and I wanted it to be like a 41 play ball card. There was no 41 play ball card of Satchel Paige for obvious reasons, but he did pitch for the Kansas City Monarchs in 1940. 
I love this set. I think it's one of the best sets in the hobby. Just the colors, the Art Deco style, the banner on the bottom. And so with this set, um, you know, it's got like the, the parentheses for them. I'm sorry, the quotations for the nicknames. Here's Ted Williams, not Theodore. The colors, the pastels, this is beautiful. And so I'm showing you these cards to kind of give you an idea about what Scott probably was looking at when he did the colors on this. Um, I sent him a photo of Satchel Page, and this photo was one I had not really seen before. And I gave him a photo of the 41 Carl Hubble and talked about the backgrounds and how I love color. And he said to me, after he worked on this for a while, George, I want to do a woodcut. And I, this might be a little bit more money. I said, do it, man. Do whatever you need to do. I trust you. Um, so look at these pastels, the green and the yellow on the DiMaggio. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about when we get to the Satch. Uh, and this was 19... 41 Playball uh, Satchel Page. But first, Scott was gave me this card. He was getting rid of worthless cards and art for uh, voluminous, ex extraordinary, exorbitant amounts of money. And so this is the 1941 Playball Satchel Page. I'll try to get this in the picture completely. This is a woodcut, and this picture I sent to Scott... Um, but he took it from there. I just said, if you could just make it as colorful as possible, uh, you that beautiful Kansas City Monarchs jersey, and you can see the colors in the background on this DiMaggio, and that's what B-Roth pointed out. He's like, my God, those colors, the pastels, look like just like a 41 play ball card. And I just thought to myself, absolutely. I mean, you can see the depth of this. If I can, it's five or six layers because the border is indented, um, and it keeps going up higher and higher until it gets to his glove. And then uh, you even have this three-dimensional banner right here. And so this is the card that never was, but now is because of Scott Reindeer Studios. And Scott, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. And just, it's not just the art, it's the creativity, it's the time. Uh, and I knew Scott was a, I was a huge Indians, he's a huge Indians fan. I'm a huge Satchel Page fan. He's a huge Satchel Page fan. So guys, I have a video recap coming up here soon. Thank you for your patience and checking this out. Again, let's get Lou Rock over a thousand subscribers. Uh, and all the guys that I, I shouted out here, please subscribe to their channels. Take care, guys, and keep collecting. <laughs> Just checking it out. Mantle fest. The Misfit Channel, Hot Red Peppers. And once I knew that when I had a second half of the sandwich at the end of the night, I'm like, this tastes a lot better. <laughs> I wasn't. Now it's a D. 
dealers that have outstanding All kinds of stuff, vintage, modern. 